my name is Matt Moss. I'm the finance director for a company called Poundfield Products, and I'm here today to talk to you about our supply of concrete to Hinkley Point. I know what you're probably all thinking. An accountant talking about concrete. Yes, that is a bit of a conversation killer. So I will try and make it as interesting as I possibly can for you and not talk about tax. So Poundfield Products, who are we, what are we? We're a precast concrete manufacturer founded in 1999. We're based off a single site in, in Ipswich, about a nine, well, just near Ipswich, a nine acre site. We employ 75 staff, and up until 2018, like most of you, we were an owner-managed business. The interesting thing is, we are, if you can see it at the back, 250 miles away from Hinkley Point. And if you know anything about concrete, it doesn't travel particularly well. It's quite expensive to move. So what do we actually do? On the tender document, I wrote, we manufacture engineered concrete solutions, use the structural elements in projects nationwide from one-off builds to large-scale infrastructure projects, which sounds pretty good. Um, and you can see just here, this is Hinkley Point, and this is some of our units on the side here. Who do we work with? Well, from an infrastructure point of view, we've worked on many uh, projects across the UK, uh, sea defence projects, railway, bridges, um, from the north all the way down through to the south. So we've got quite a large spectrum of, of, of clients that we, and projects that we've dealt with. Our business also provides other concrete solutions from agriculture through to waste, and we also have a housing element as well. So quite a, quite a breadth. But what did we actually do for Hinkley Point is, is what you really want to know. So we supplied 150 retaining wall units extending 200 metres long down on the, on, on the site at Hinkley, and you can see just circled down <coughs> the first load of our, our units coming in here. It was via two contracts, uh, the Kia Bam uh, joint venture and also the Bylaw joint venture, each worth over £100,000 each. And the main purpose for that was to, uh, for material storage. So we are usually some of the first people on site the construction of a site like this takes an awful lot of construction material and our units are used to store them on site. So specifically what were we asked to do? So we had to provide concrete solutions capable of storing construction materials. They had to deal with the force of the load that was being used, quite a significant load with the amount of materials being used, and it had to provide a flexibility so that it could be temporarily moved as the site developed and we had to provide a proven solution. Now our proven solution was a product called the Alpha Block. So what was the product and what was the proof that we were able to deliver on this project? Well, what we were able to do is provide them with the evidence that the product was structurally designed, it had the supporting calculations to, to do the job. We manufactured to British standards, we were able to provide the evidence for that. And the product itself is CE accredited, which means that it's produced to a quality standard that they were able to accept. We, we were able to produce all the, the supporting documentation for it and provide <coughs> evidence that it was controlled or produced under factory control procedures. We also have in-house testing of our products and we were able to provide them with the strength of our products both the next day, seven days, 28 days after. And if you know anything about concrete, it's the 28th day that is the important. The fundamental point here is that we did not actually change our business to be fit for nuclear. Our processes were already in place, and it was surprising to us how ready we already were, and the fear factor of not being ready for nuclear didn't actually exist. I'm not saying that will be the case for everybody, but that was the case for us. So what did we do? How did we get involved? Um, one of the benefits of the supply chain, um, if you sign up to it, is that you get updates from the Tier 1 awards. <coughs> so we knew that by law had been awarded the contract, um, the, the joint venture contract at Hinkley Point, which means that we could be positively engaging with that uh, joint venture to give us multiple points of attack through the supply chain, through the chambers, um, direct to, to the joint venture itself. But we had to understand our offer. We had to knew, know where we sat in the process and what we were able to offer the contract. And that was really important. Um, were we a direct supplier? Were we an indirect supplier? Did we have to could we provide it on our own or did we have to use third parties? 
But the important thing about it was that we didn't assume that our competitors would be there. We'd never assumed that um, we would be going into a bit of a dogfight in terms of, of the contract. So, prepare, preparing to be fit for nuclear, as I said, actually, <clears throat> we found that they were very similar to other major contracts and major tenders that we'd already uh, worked on. But you want to try and make it as easy as you possibly can for the supply chain. So make sure, as I've said previously, about your offer. Make sure you know what you're, what you're providing. Looking at the part, making sure your website, your literature, the performance of your product and the information that sits behind that is relevant and up-to-date. Accreditations are useful. We're not ISO accredited. We're, we have our C uh, accreditation. They are useful in the process, but actually the important thing is that you can demonstrate your competence. That's really essential in terms of delivering on these, um, on these projects. Vetting your own supply chain, working with others, as mentioned previously. We use a third-party contract haulier to deliver all of our products. So it was important for us to ensure that our third-party supply, when our, when our products turned up on site, that the haulier would actually comply and um, follow the health and safety procedures on a site like Hinkley, which I'm sure you can imagine are very high. Without doubt, you're going to have to de dedicate some time to this um, and engage very, very early, because if you don't, you could well miss <coughs> out. And as I've said here, you want to become a radioactive man or woman to, to, to be successful in, in being fit for nuclear. But like most of you, we, we sat and thought, how do we get past that first hurdle? How do we, how do we prepare for the unknown, the fit for nuclear um, buzzword, so to speak, uh, when you don't know what you don't know? How do you know whether being fit for nuclear uh, whether you are actually ready for, for it. Are your accreditations up to standard? You know, how competent are you in being able to deliver that? How, how will your business cope with, um, with the demand of such a large-scale project? And like many of you, that can be off-putting because you don't know what you're, what you're going forward <coughs> to. But like us, we seize the opportunity, and I suggest that you would do as well. But I was asked... When preparing, when, when I was asked to, to do the presentation, what help did we get? What help did we have? We secured the first contract four years ago. So what help did we have four years ago?